It is 9.30 and we're going to get started and I will turn the meeting over to our illustrious recording secretary slash general manager to do roll call. Mm, thank you, the Swiss Army Knife. Acadia 2. Absent. Andover A. Absent. Andover B. Absent. Andover E. Absent. Andover G. Present by proxy. Andover H. Absent. Andover I. Present by proxy. Bedford A. Absent. Bedford B. Absent. Bedford C. Present by proxy. Bedford D. Present by proxy. Bedford F. Absent. Bedford H. Absent. Bedford J. Absent. Brookfield. Present by proxy. Cambridge C. Absent. Cambridge F. Absent. Cambridge H. Present. Cambridge I. Absent. Cambridge J. Absent. Cambridge L. Cambridge M. Cambridge L is absent. Cambridge M. Present by proxy, Cambridge M. Canton Court. Absent. Dorchester A. Absent. Dorchester D. Absent. Fairfield A. Present by proxy. Fairfield C. Oh, present by proxy. Fairfield D. Present by proxy. Fairfield F. Absent. Fairfield G. Absent. Fairfield G is present. Gloucester B. Present by proxy. Gloucester C. Absent. Gloucester D. Present by proxy. Gloucester G. Absent. Gloucester H. Absent. Present. Gloucester H is present. Gloucester K. Absent. Gloucester L. Present by proxy. Gloucester N. Absent. Highgate E. Absent. Highgate F. Absent. Highgate 3. Absent. Highgate 4. Present by proxy. Huntington. Absent. Inverness. Present by proxy. Mm -hmm. They're present. Inverness, would you like us to use your proxy? Yes. Thank you. Kensington. Kensington. Thank you. Knowles 1. Present by proxy. Knowles 2. Knowles 2 is present. Knowles 3. 
Present by proxy. We have a proxy. Would you like to leave that in? Lancaster 2, absent, Lancaster 3, absent, Lancaster 4, absent. Manchester 3, absent, Maplewood. Present by proxy. Nantucket three, absent, Oakley Green, present, Oxford one, absent, Quail Pass, Quail Pass, Absent, Radisson one, absent, Richmond. We have a proxy. Present by proxy. Present by proxy, are we going to leave your proxy in? Thank you. Southampton one, present. Tremont one. Present. Tremont two. Present by proxy. Okay. We have 71.8% of the units represented. We have a quorum. Then with that at 937, I will call the meeting to order and please rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the October 21st membership meeting. The proxies do not have any no votes. Is there any objection to approval of the minutes from the floor? With no objections to the minutes of the floor, we will pass the minutes considered unanimous by all in attendance. That will save us going through an entire roll call vote. Uh, Keith, are you ready? Uh, Keith, I'm sorry. <laughs> Steve and Ginger, are you ready for your presentation? Uh, Keith, when you have multiple <laughs> Steve, when you have multiple tasks, I understand it may take a minute. So, so while he's uh, booting up here, first I just wanted to mention that Kings Point is fortunate to have Mabel Crucera back serving the Kings Point community. And she's sitting she's up in the, in the There she, she is. Wave to him. Uh, she's a different capacity now. Uh, Mabel will be working with uh, Matthew on the VESTA administration of the trust. So... Uh, welcome back. She's doing a great job. She's orienting, learning, and she knows so many of you. So if you see her in the hallway, tell her hello. Because so. uh, as you said, if you're in the hallway, say hello. Uh, Mabel, you told me that you you don't have an office and you're sharing yours with Matt. So you drop your stuff off and then you wander. Is that correct? <laughs> she's, she's not saying 
So you, if you are in the North Club or the South Club, you will see Ma Bell uh, walking around doing numerous tasks for Anybody remember Land Hogan's Trust. Heroes? I know, I know nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's saying. All right. I know you guys have a busy morning, so let me get started here. We'll talk about our fitness programming. As you can imagine, this starts building um, in season. And we've had over 9,300 folks use the fitness uh, program. We've got our class attendance here. You will see the water class attendance drop because it's a little chilly out there right now. So um, there's your land group class attendance, 31% increase over the prior month, um, over 100, or 116 classes taught. Moving into spa and salon usage for October, we served 444 clients. That's a 57% increase over prior month with 753 services performed and just over 24,000 in sales and merchandise uh, for those services. That's a 26% increase. In food and beverage sales, we had 7,351 patrons served at the South Club. We still remain consistent with about 11, 12% of those patrons utilizing the Portico Pickup Program. And you can see what a whopping increase that is over the prior month, 47%. And the sales just topping over 158,000. How about this, folks? We got the permit for the South Club. How about a hand for, for Hillsborough County? Only took a year. Did I say that? Um, so the people, Jack has teased us that there's, I think, is it a first watch over there by Home Depot yeah, that they're building? He said, you know, they got their permit. They're already built and serving people sooner than we can get this. And the whole thing was because we took something that was a, uh, a cabana, a, a bathroom, and you know, a, a laundry room, and turned it into a place that's going to uh, serve alcohol. And they get pretty feisty about, pretty particular about stuff. So anyway, whatever the case, it's it's done, and we've got it. So Snoopy's pretty happy there. Um, the permit for the renovation. Um, now that that's been approved, we've got our underground plumbing completed, and now we have to wait on our first inspection. We hope that doesn't take a year. It shouldn't. <laughs> But we'll see. Once the inspection's completed, the installation of the new footers, electrical, concrete flooring, and blocks will begin. So hopefully you can start seeing some, some real progress out there. On phase 1.5, the ground preparation for the installation of the new concrete continues. That's nearing completion. Uh, we've completed the conduit installation for the future sound system, uh, the lighting, and the RFID gates. And we plan to begin the installation of the new concrete in the area that's going to be in front of those cabanas, previously known as cabanas, soon to be known as the Tiki Bar, and, and the surrounding areas in the coming weeks. On phase two, we've obtained the bids uh, for the other components, the shade structures, uh, the appliances, all the kitchen equipment that will go in in the building, uh, the pool furniture replacement, landscaping, and we have reviewed these with the board. That was an animated conversation, I'm just saying. Phase three, <laughs> the future sound system bid was approved, the deposit paid, and equipment has been ordered. A Couple other projects here, the main clubhouse roof coating is almost completed. Uh, the clubhouse renovation project continues. The lobby tile and painting is completed. Work continues outside and refurbing Le Perc that will uh, be offering a new type of food concept when we open. Uh, the next section of renovation has begun and includes the hallway in front of the business office extending to the first set of card room doors. Uh, that s section is es estimated to take approximately two weeks. And you probably all noticed all the furniture was delivered yesterday. And so the team set it all out there in the lobby and in the hallway. So it's coming together quite nicely. There'll be artwork and, and decor and more things as we go. Here's your special event information. The winter series, uh, you've heard this before. It's 13 of the 14 series shows have sold out. Uh, with the popularity of these shows, the theater director, Scott Burgach, has announced three pop-up shows. We've got March 30th, April 4th, and April 7th. Uh, the shows are listed there. If you have guests coming in for spring break or you, or you uh, 
think you're not busy on one of those dates, you might come out. Those are always a good time. That also will be in the pointer and e blasted out, so you can pick up those dates if you haven't taken note of them. At the, on the South Club, mark your calendars for these upcoming South Club events. We've got the uh, Thanksgiving Day Buffet, and I believe there's only two tickets left uh, of the 140 seatings. And then on the Portico Pickup, they, they have a capacity, uh, original capacity for 120. I'm not sure how many of those are available, but uh, the board had asked us to offer Thanksgiving dinner, thinking that would be something desirable for folks who doesn't, don't want to cook, don't have family in. And uh, clearly that was a, a good idea, and it's going over well. So we're going to look at future holidays, something. Christmas is hard, but maybe like Easter, you know, things like that where people have family in and might enjoy being able to dine at, the, at their South Club. We have November 30th, Music on the Patio. Uh, we've got December 23rd, Holiday Buffet. And um, then a reminder, breakfasts are served in the South Club from 8 to 11, Thursday through Sunday. A couple more here. Kings Point Catering is now available for your event catering. If your association or your, your, uh, your clubs uh, would like to have a party, uh, contacts Alex. Um, she will set you up and tell you all sorts of fun things that you can do that might be d new and different. November 4th, classic concerts event at the South Club featuring Bon Jovi's 2009 Live in New York. It's not really Bon Jovi, but um, it was a huge success, and stay tuned for more uh, as they come up. The celebration of the holidays will return to the main clubhouse on December 12th. Uh, tickets go on sale for that November 29th, 30th, and December 1st. That was a huge success last year, so I hope you all come out because it's really a nice festive time to wander around in the clubhouse. And watch for some new programming, including our outdoor concert tribute to Woodstock, uh, casino nights, themed dances, music, bingo, and more. Matt uh, actually is on vacation, uh, spending some time with his family. We look forward to him getting uh, some well-deserved rest. So he did ask me to uh, be sure to spread the word that these services we had so much um, interest in them, and people are really loving them, but I also have to make sure that the, these vendors want to stay here. So remember that they're here, the physician stat lab. If any doctor gives you a, a prescription, they can do it right here for you, uh, draw blood and, and do those tests. Podiatry, the on-spot on dermatology, um, and, of course, the COVID tests, vaccines, and flu shots still available through Delivered Rx. Here's your transportation usage. You can see some increases there. They'll, they'll climb up for season and in security. Uh, finishing up here, we had a 10% increase over the prior month, highest phone call volume in a day, 343 calls on October 11th. Um, the average just about 300 calls a day there. And we had issued over 13,000 passes. In the incident reports, a couple notables. We had a business-related visitor arrive at the front gate. He gave us an address and requested entry into the community. No authorization had been provided by the resident for entry, and the resident didn't answer their phone for verification when they were called. So instead of leaving, as our team asked him to do, he ran the gate, so security uh, went and found him at the address that he had given us. That wasn't very hard to figure out. So the visitor then immediately turned around and exited the community um, when he saw us on his tail. Uh, finally, a resident, oh, uh, I'm sorry, a res this type is real small down there, Steve. <laughs> a resident called the front gates uh, sounding as if they were in distress and security used caller ID, tracked their address upon arrival at their home Security talked to the resident's roommate who informed that the resident was actually in the hospital and had her cell phone and they were tr checking on the friend. And anyway, it all turned out all right, but again, always nice to know that we've got um, you know, neighbors, friends, roommates looking out for, for us uh, in the community. And finally, security would like to remind residents to please not piggyback their golf cart entry into the community through the golf cart path. In the last few weeks, the the uh, piggybacking uh, broke off the arm four times. So just wait your turn, scan your badge, go through when the arm goes up. 
And then uh, finally, as we gather with grateful hearts, uh, Dan, myself, Matthew, the whole team, and best of wishes, all of you, a happy Thanksgiving. Before I turn the meeting over to Steve, uh, you all came in the building through the front door, I would assume, or walked through the lobby. What do you think of the furniture and the decor out there now compared to what was out there before? Uh, I walked in and I looked at Le Perc and I thought, oh my God, the tables and chairs are absolutely fantastic and I know they have to be rearranged, but the new leather furniture uh, in the lobby and the new tables and stuff, and probably when they get the out art decor up, it's really going to change the whole look of the North Clubhouse. And uh, I don't know if Victoria is here or not, uh, but I know Victoria has worked diligently on the refurbishing of the North Clubhouse. I know she worked diligently yesterday with staff to uh, unpack the furniture, and I want to extend our appreciation from the Federation Board to all the work Victoria has done uh, in the refurbishment of the North Clubhouse. It, it doesn't look like the same clubhouse it did six months ago. So, uh, Ginger, would you please extend to Victoria our appreciation for all the work she did. I sure will. Um, Tosh just wrote me there's about 10 Portico pickup Thanksgiving meals left. So if you want one of those, get one. And with that, I'll turn the meeting over to you, Steve. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. First Service has been busy preparing budget packets, so that's pretty much uh, the bulk of, of this report, and we're going to spend some time talking about that during the next meeting. Um, Hurricane Nicole came through since we've met last. Um, the damage from Hurricane Nicole was primarily in debris that the landscapers have for the most part, picked up already, which is a good thing. Um, I, I do have a special announcement on behalf of First Service. Yesterday, Joey Munez, who is our landscape specialist, was awarded the Southeast Regions uh, for First Service Be Genuinely Helpful Values at Work Award for the year by our CEO, David Diestel. We had a nice video conference yesterday, and uh, it is a very prestigious internal award, and I'd like to play a video clip of that for you. Everybody, welcome, and it is great to see everyone, and we, <clears throat> we are excited to celebrate Joey as the 2022 South Region Values at Work honoree. Joey, congratulations. <laughs> Now, one thing, one thing we can tell by the great nomination from Helena is that you are a key contributor at King's Point and have done it and become that, it appears, in a very short period of time. So congratulations. And we heard that you embody, through this nomination, you embody the Be Genuinely Helpful value and live it every day through mm -hmm. your bright personality and friendly style with everyone at the community. And so I can tell that you're always going out of your way to help residents, board members and the team while doing it with what I heard was a thousand watt smile. So Joey, <laughs> we are so proud of you, extremely grateful for what you do every day you are an asset to First Service Residential and the team there at Kings Point. So congratulations on this well-deserved rec recognition. And that was, yeah, Robert Smith, who is uh, the president of our South Region. Uh, Joey is here. Congratulations. My friend, well done, well done. So now you know where he is. Um. <laughs> Why aren't you out in the field? <laughs> Joey, I want to uh, add to the first surface recognition, the board's recognition to you too. Uh, and I know I speak for the residents of this community and saying thank you for the work you do. Thank you. Um, 
just one final note. Uh, again, on, on behalf of our First Service family, to you and yours, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, our office hours next week, we emailed to everyone this morning, but we will be closed Thanksgiving Day the day after, and we'll be closing at 3 o'clock on Wednesday. If anything occurs in that time when we're not in the office, please feel free to call the office number, the emergency line, uh, our customer care uh, call center will gladly take your calls 24-7. Uh, typically, they come to me. Most of you know my email. Most, Some of you know my cell phone. Um, I'm not going anywhere, um, and, and I stand ready to serve you over the Thanksgiving break, as does our entire team. Sir, that is my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just to check to see if there are any updates uh, from the committees. Uh, Dan, do you, Ray, uh, yeah, I know you don't have anything because it'll be presented in the budget presentation. So, Dan, do you have anything? And you have a mic there. The Spectrum contract is almost finished. Uh, there's going to be a meeting with their attorneys to go through uh, a couple of discrepancies uh, we have with them. Um, and the RFP for management services currently held contract, which is currently held by First Service, has been distributed and we are in the uh, middle of the process. Um, and that's all I have. You have anything, Tom? Jim, All right. uh, I have an announcement. Uh, I'm going to look to Keith, uh, Steve, uh, and I keep saying Keith because he's on my mind because earlier this week uh, I received a text. That is the arrival of the newest Wilking. Uh, for you, those who don't know, Keith had three girls. He now has four. <laughs> she arrived on Wednesday, and the mother and daughter are doing fine. Uh, I would just ask that you keep Keith in your thoughts uh, as the years go by, because I know with four daughters, uh, he is totally outnumbered in that house. Uh, I, kid, I was joking with him, and I said, well, now you have five females. And he sent back a text to me, and he said, and my dog is also a female. <laughs> so I just thought you'd like to know. Uh, I'm quite sure if you uh, send an email or want to contact First Service to express your congratulations to Keith and his family, uh, he would very much appreciate it. Uh, so just keep him in your thoughts. He has a great challenge coming in the future. Uh, the board has always, always joked with with Keith on, maybe we better tell you how this occurs because you, uh, four children, I think the oldest one is seven if or, or younger. Uh, we keep telling Keith it's not in the water. And with that, the board would like to express its best wishes for a very happy Thanksgiving to all the residents of Kings Point. Uh, and with that, I will open it up for any good and welfare announcements. Uh, if we don't have any, we can go directly into the budget meeting after a short break. Good morning. Rodney Walker, Oakley Green President. I want to share with all of you a letter that was sent out. Sure. A letter that was sent out to our residents last night. Hi, Oakley Green Association residents. It is officially budget season. The First Service's budget projections have been released to each association. As I have feared, it is an ugly picture. Our association's current budget monthly assessment is $591.76. The First Service's projected 2023-2024 budget monthly assessment is $712.18. This is an increase of $120.42. 
We have had assessment increases in budget years 2021-22 of approximately $50, and in budget year 2022-23, again, of approximately $50. If we were to adopt the First Services budget as presented, monthly assessments over three years will have increased by $220.42. These increased levels are not sustainable for some of our residents. The fees at these levels impact affordability to live in Kings Point. They also may impact our home values at resale. Many of us are on fixed incomes and we need to make difficult choices due to inflation's effects to our everyday living costs from automobile insurance, homeowners insurance, gasoline, groceries, etc. I have heard from a Master Association board member at a member of our association that some folks may not be able to afford to live here. I find this attitude from our Kings Point leaders lacks at the very least empathy and borders on being calloused. Either way, it is unacceptable. Please keep in mind our association in 2023-2024 had direct responsibility for only 11% of the monthly assessment. The majority goes to the Mass Association, Land Trust, and the Federation. The budget provides data of the Mass Association, Federation, and Land Trust. Point is two things. We as Kings Point residents have to start paying attention. We have to elect people on board of directors that actually care about what's happening. An example of that is how many times we've attended meetings where we don't have presidents even bother to show up. Number one. Number two, regarding this specific budget, from the Federation. There is a section in there related to litigation, and that is the majority of the $3.20 increase, if I understand it correctly. I request that this board have a presentation made specific to this issue so all residents understand why it is we are paying this increase and what the pot of gold may be at the end of the rainbow and what the risks are. I don't suggest that you pr provide any private or confidential information, just the public information that may already be out there, specifically given the amount of turnover we've had in this particular Kings Point Residents Association. Thank you. I am going to clarify for all those in attendance is the budget packages which you picked up in your individual association budgets are not up for approval by the membership of the Federation. They are your individual association budgets and your individual associations can modify uh, certain aspects of the budget, but the budget that was presented uh, is the budget uh, based upon the contracts that have been signed and the Federation and master budgets that uh, have been approved. Uh, if you look through your budget, you will notice uh, the largest increase in the budget specifically is insurance. Uh, it does have an impact based upon uh, the value of your uh, replacement cost of your buildings and the rate that we pay per $100, uh, that has a very large bearing on your budget. Uh, and in your budget package, it's basically listed, but all of this will be uh, gone over with the uh, members in attendance today, and the floor will be open for questions you may have regarding the specific budget. If there are no other good or welfare announcements, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Dane. Second. Thank you, Jim. All in favor say aye. Opposed? The meeting is adjourned. Uh, Steve, how much time would you like before you start the budget presentations?